Hi, and welcome back. So in the past video, we were working through an example where, uh, if you remember, I showed you a penny, and we were figuring out how many, if this was, I don't have, I should have kept my drawing of the penny, but if we said that we had a penny, we were figuring out how many atoms would, I guess, if we had just a straight line of atoms, how many atoms would it take to cut across the diameter of this penny? And in order to do that, I, uh, I guess I might have introduced you to a, a little bit of a new concept. Uh, and I, I sort of did a little bit of an explanation uh, of it in the last video, but I used something called dimensional analysis. So dimensional, dimensional analysis. And what dimensional analysis essentially is, is it's converting units. It's a, it's a, and essentially we're going to use it a lot in this course. Uh, dimensional analysis is essentially, is essentially a, a uh, way that we'll be looking at problems in, and we're essentially just going to be looking at solving problems by a system of converting units. And one of the, uh, so maybe I'll just define that, I'll say, uh, solving or uh, so conversion of units or conversion of units. And you can see that dimensional analysis, and we might not get, I'll, I'll give you kind of a, a simple example of how you can use dimensional analysis to solve a problem, probably in this video, and maybe if I do, if I, if I have time for it, maybe, maybe in the next video. But, uh, you can really use dimensional analysis. It might sound like we're just converting converting units, we're converting feet to meters or something like that, but uh, hopefully I'll show you that by converting units, we, we can really solve, uh, in this video we'll solve a pretty simple problem, but uh, as we progress further along in the playlist, we'll, we're going to use dimensional analysis to solve some pretty complex problems. and. Uh, hopefully you'll see that uh, uh, by using dimensional analysis, it'll make it much better. So let me, uh, I guess, also say, or actually, you know what, let me just start start uh, in with, with a little bit of an example. So if you remember from the last video, we took a penny, and we said that this penny, that this distance across the penny was going to be 19.05 millimeters. That was the distance that we started with. That was the, the, the diameter of the penny. And what we wanted to get was we essentially wanted to get to a point where we had this, well, well, we wanted to figure out how many atoms across the penny this was, but in order to get there, the first thing we had to do was we had to figure out, okay, how many, how many meters is 19.05 millimeters? And in order to do that, we used what's called a conversion factor. And essentially, what a conversion factor is, is it's a fractional quantity, so we've got a numerator and a denominator, and based on the units that you put into that fractional quantity, it, it essentially works out to uh, multiplying the quantity that you started with by one. So anyway, I'll, I'll actually throw this, uh, I'll, I'll show you this in a second, and maybe it'll make sense. So we have 19.05 millimeters, and we want to convert that to meters. And keep in mind, when you're doing this, we're, we're multiplying by a fraction. And when we're doing this, the whole point of dimensional analysis, which sort of makes it work, is that we're going to multiply our units along with all of our values. So if I say I want to convert this into meters, I can say that one meter is going to be equal to 1,000 millimeters, right? These are, this is the same quantity. If I have one meter, that's the same amount of length, that's the same amount of distance as 1,000 millimeters. If I was, but if, and keep in mind, if I was to complete this operation, what would happen? And keep in mind the, the big thing that you, you always have to do when you're doing dimensional analysis is first uh, is to remember that the very first thing that would happen is these units, millimeters, would cancel with each other. And then we would have 19.05, which we would divide by 1,000. 
and that would give us, well, and that's, that's an, a pretty easy calculation, and I think we did this in the last video, that would just give us 0 0.01905 meters, okay? And this quantity hasn't changed at all. All we have is we've got, we've got this, this distance, we started out with 19.05 millimeters, and we now have that distance converted to meters. And so the important thing, one of the important things, and uh, uh, a couple things to take away, is this that we use to do that, this fractional quantity we have, this is called a conversion factor. Conversion factor. And essentially, all we're doing, we're not changing this value. This value in meters is still the same amount of length as we started with. It's the same amount of length that, that it takes to to completely cross the uh, uh, cross-section of a, of a penny. So it's still the same amount of length. All we have is we now have it in meters. So now we've got this, this value in meters. So what did we do after that in order to solve our problem? Well, the next thing we needed was we needed meters in picometers. So we pretty much just took this quantity and we threw it into, I'll give myself a little bit more room, we threw it into another conversion factor, right? So I'll just say, if we imagine that this quantity just came down, and we threw it into, actually, you know what? I'm going to, bear with me for a second. I'm just going to erase a few things because I think it'll make things a bit more, maybe a bit easier for you to see. There we go, sorry. So the next thing we did, and keep in mind that at this point, that at this point in the in our conversion factor right here we have got we have got our value in meters right we've got essentially what what it is this this uh, distance that we started out with we have this in meters so the next thing we want to get it in our next uh, uh, step in the in in converting this is we need to convert meters to picometers right because that was the that was the unit that we had measured. If you remember, we had a an a uh, an atom or the the uh, radius of of our copper atom was measured in picometers, right? So the next thing we have to do is we have to convert meters to picometers. So we can say that one meter is going to be equal to ten to the twelfth picometers, right? Because that was, if you remember our, our video on a on a um, uh, standard standard units uh, 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 prefixes, the pico is going to be uh, you would multiply it times ten to the twelfth. So it's a very very small uh, uh, unit. But anyway, the important thing to realize is now our meters cancel. And keep in mind, this is another this is another conversion factor. Our, our, um, you know, our unit of length, if, if you take one meter and 10 to the 12th picometers, this is the same thing. This is the same thing as if we were just multiplying by one, right? We're not changing the distance at all. We're just changing the units. So then meters and meters cancel out. And then at this point, we've got, we've got essentially what we're looking for in picometers, and then the very last thing that we did, the very last thing, was we essentially said, okay, so we had this distance in picometers, and we want that in the number of atoms. So, and now we just, again, we're, uh, you'll see that we're just going to be multiplying by, by one, essentially. And we, we said that the diameter of one atom, because the, the atomic radius of a copper atom, was 126, or no, it was 128 picometers. So multiply that by two gives us the diameter. Uh, so we could say that, so, uh, sorry, I'm getting, getting ahead of myself. So we could say that the diameter of one atom of copper is going to be 256 picometers per every one atom per every one atom diameter. Again, this is another conversion factor. All we're doing is multiplying by one. And then at this stage, 
and even I, I don't even have to write the line. Well, actually, I'll write the line anyway. It gives us gives us a bit of unity. But at this stage, what what do we have our distances? We st we started in millimeters. We went to meters. Then we took meters, and we went to picometers. And now finally, we took picometers, and we converted that into the number of atoms it would take us to completely get across this line in the middle of the penny. And all we were doing the entire time was we had our conversion factors and we just multiplied each value, each different uh, value that we had by, by one. Because even though, and essentially the way that we did that, even though we had these big different numbers in here, we were multiplying by one because we were changing the units at the same time. And so, you know, you can see we multiply, we multiply by picometers and then we divide by picometers. So these, these units cancel out. We multiply by meters, then divide by meters. So those un units cancel out. And then finally, we have converted essentially this distance, this 19.05 millimeters, we have converted that distance into, we could even say, you know, uh, copper, Copper atoms. Copper atoms. So anyway, that is, I guess, uh, hopefully the I, I might have gone over some of this stuff in in the last video on on the size of the atom. Uh, the that that video is mainly to just give you a concept of just how tiny an atom was. This video is more about the uh, the method of doing dimensional analysis. In the next couple of videos, I'll maybe do a few examples of some pretty simple problems that aren't really chemistry problems and just show you how we would solve those problems using dimensional analysis. And I'd say even if you, uh, if you don't understand this uh, quite yet, I'll, I'll do a bunch more examples and, you know, uh, probably uh, the, 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 the sections that we, that we use dimensional analysis a lot in, I'll definitely do a ton of examples there. So, uh, so anyway, hopefully you found this useful, and I'll see you in a future video.